So we've seen one way how our higher derivatives are connected through their physical interpretation. So this would be the connection from position to velocity to acceleration. What I want to talk about here is how do we connect our three ideas through the graph? So I want to know how is our function related to its derivative related to its second derivative. So I'm just going to do this with one example, and then we'll take a look at how to line all the graphs up. So my function is going to be f of x equal to 2x cubed minus 3x squared. I do its first derivative. That gives me 6x squared minus 6x. So this is going to be a parabola facing up. Then I do another derivative. Second derivative of f is going to be 12x minus 6. So that's going to be a straight line. Now, what we're going to do is, we're going to take the graph of each of these, we'll line them up so we'll have one over the other. And what we want to pay attention to here is, how do the tangent lines relate to the graph below it? So remember when I take the derivative, all we're asking for is, give me the slope of the tangent line. Well, the first thing you want to pay attention to is where your tangent lines have slope zero. So let's take a look at this. So here are my, my three graphs. So here we have f, here I have f prime, the parabola facing up, and then I have f double prime, which is a straight line. So now, if I take a look at f, where are the horizontal tangent lines going to be? Well, they're going to be at 0 and 1. So what's going to happen is, when I go to f prime and I graph it, at 0 and 1, that's where I'm going to cross the x-axis. Now, what else can I take a look at? Let's take a look at the tangent lines and their slope. So if you notice in the region going up to zero, the tangent lines are always going to be like this, meaning they always have positive slope. When I go to f prime, that's just going to mean that when I'm on this region, my function is going to have values that are above the x-axis, just meaning the functions have positive values. Now, when I go from zero to one, you'll notice, okay, here, our tangent lines are all like this. So that means we have negative slopes, which means when I go to f prime and we take a look at what's happening, the values of f prime will all be below the x-axis, as so. When I go past one, what we notice is, well, again, we're back into this region of positive slope. So we expect that our f prime is gonna have all positive values when I get past one and it does as so. Okay, that's going from f to f prime. Let's go from f prime to f double prime. Here, where's the horizontal tangent line at? That's gonna show up at one half. So when I go to f double prime, that's just gonna be where we hit the x-axis. What else do we have? Going up to one half, you'll notice that all the tangent lines are gonna have slopes like this. So that means they're all gonna be negative. When I go down to f double prime, we expect all the values of the graph to be under the x-axis, and we see that they are. If I go on the other side of 1 half, we're back to positive slopes, so we would expect that our graph is always gonna be above the x-axis when I'm on the other side of 1 half, and we see that's gonna be the case. So if you're trying to connect your f to your f prime to your f double prime, there's this business of tangent lines that ties everything together. A little bit later on, we'll see how to tie f to f double prime.